Come on in. Are you still in need of mentors? Yes. Good morning and welcome to effective note taking. Um, this session will be recorded. And as you come on, just type hello in the chat box so that I will know who's with me. Um, if you don't mind, I am going to share my screen with you so that you can see the notes as we speak. Um, and again, um, as I said, this session will be recorded. Today, we're gonna to talk briefly about effective note-taking. Note taking is very important as a college student because taking notes help it helps us to study. So we're going to talk about various ways to take notes. Again, as we talk about note taking, there is nothing new that you probably have not already heard, but um, we're just going to talk about it in a different way. 
The first thing you wanna do when you talk about note taking is you wanna show up. You wanna show up for class um, so that you can take the notes. If you're not in class, of course, you can't take the notes. You can share with someone else um, or you can get notes from someone else, but it's not the same as taking your own notes. Um, when you get someone else's notes, of course, you still have to make the notes your own. Attend class and prepare before you go to class. Um, some people don't read their lessons before they go to class. That is not a smart thing to do. Because if you read your lesson before you go to class, you understand and you know what the professor is talking about. And many times when you're in classes like that, you know what the key points are. And if you've read your lesson before you go to class, you can ask questions because you can put your questions that you want to ask your professor down so that you don't forget them. Be present, even if you are absent, be present. What I mean by that is make sure you get your notes from someone in the class if you're not there, someone that you know take good notes. Um, get notes from them if you're not there. Always go to class prepared so that you can take better notes. Again, reading is the key to success. If you don't read or if you don't read your lesson before you go to class, sometimes you get behind and you don't know what questions to ask. And many times you may not even know what they're talking about if you have not read your lesson. It's always important that you read your lesson prior to class. Um, preparation allows you to be more receptive to the information that's being talked about. It helps you to understand the information better that's being talked about. The other thing that you should do is you should take your notes as you read. Many times as you start to read a book or a chapter or something, it gives you questions that you wanna think about as you read your lesson. And as you read the lesson, you wanna answer the questions that they give you, make it make sense to you. When you are taking notes, you wanna understand what you're writing. Uh, decipher what's important and what's not. Everything is not important, and you don't need to write down every single thing that the professor will say to you. However, if a professor takes the time to write it on the board, it's probably important. If they take the time to tell you this will probably be on the test, it's probably important. If they tell you you're going to see this again, it's probably important. And if it's important, you need to write it down. If it's important, you need to write it down. We do not remember everything that's being said in a class. So it's important to write it down. You can abbreviate it, you can do shorthand, just write it down to make it make sense to you because everybody is not gonna read your notes. So make it make sense to you. Also, if it's not clear, don't be afraid to ask questions. It's always smart to ask questions if something is not clear. And again, as I said, when you're reading and you're taking notes, make sure that you put your question down so you can ask them in class. If it's something that you're not certain about, ask your professor and make sure you have the notes before you get to class so you can ask. Pay attention in class. Um, many times students will go to class and they don't pay attention. They sit there on their, their phone. All of the time, I have to tell my students, put your phone up, unplug at least for 45 to 50 minutes. Put your phone up. You need to pay attention in class. Even if you're in a le lesson and you find the lesson boring, you find the instructor boring, it doesn't matter. You still need to pay attention to get good grades in class. And when you are in class and you're paying attention, if you, hear, if you hear transitional words, you need to pay attention. If you hear phrases and sentences that apply to the lesson, you need to pay attention. Again, you need to order a system 
a set up a system that works for you. You don't have to worry about anybody else's notes or you taking notes from anybody else. You need to find a system that works for you. Um, again, be attentive at all times because if you're not attentive, you may write down the wrong information. And if you write down the wrong information, you may study for the wrong information. So you need to be attentive at all times to avoid uh, wrong nature note taking a wrong information um, for you to study on a test. So pay attention, be attentive. When you take notes, it's not wise to write all over the paper. If you write all over the paper, you can't really read or understand your notes or you have a, a hard time putting it together. So to organize your notes, I would probably write on one side of the paper so that you would be able to see it. Um, sometimes people write on the side, they write on the front, they write on the left and the right side. I'm going to be honest with you, I was one of those people. And when you do that, your notes are very unorganized. And when your notes are unorganized, it's very difficult to study. So write on one side of the paper and don't write on the back of the paper. Um, if you have a tendency to write on the back of the paper, it makes it a little bit more difficult to read. And you don't want that when you're studying. So when you write on the back side of the paper, you have a tendency sometimes too to overlook the information. So you want your notes to be as organized as possible when um, you are taking notes so that you can study them more easily. Um, again, as I said earlier, write questions in the margin so you don't forget to ask your professor. If there's something that you don't understand, write it down so it can be answered. Now, this is what works for me. You can do what works for you. Um, I use a spiral notebooks when I'm taking notes. And the reason I do that is so that all my notes will stay together. If I have a tendency, or I used to, I would have a tendency to take notes on paper that I could like tear off real easily. And when I did that, my notes were very difficult to keep up with. I would have notes all over the place. But if it's in a spiral notebook, uh, it's, it keeps it together for you and it's not as easy to take off. But again, use what works for you. The other thing that uh, some people, I would suggest that you do, once your class is over, if you take notes and they're kind of messy, I would recipher uh, those notes after class. I would redo them. I would write them so I would understand it, or either I would type them up so I can see them. That is, if I've written all over the place and something may not be clear to me. If you do this, this will help you clarify your notes a little bit better. So as soon as the class is over, I would redo those notes to make them make sense to me. When you are taking notes, I would say to you, highlight the information sometimes, but don't overdo it. Sometimes you see people that highlight in every single word in the paragraph, they highlight it. That doesn't do a bit of good if you're gonna highlight everything in the paragraph and everything in the paragraph isn't important. So make sure you highlight, but don't overdo it. And when you use, uh, when you highlight, you can use different colors to show the importance of a subject or the main points or the sub points. Um, and I would say to you, when you take your notes, review them frequently. Um, some folks say, review them weekly. I would not say review them weekly. The reason I would not say review them weekly is because if you go to class twice a week, what good is it gonna to do to review them weekly? I would say do a little bit daily, not weekly, um, do a little bit daily. As you can see to the right, I have like a color guide there. And, and this isn't gonna work for everyone, but in this color guide, you can see that general highlights a general information is in yellow. 
If we have an author in works that cite it, you see it's in orange. When you're doing titles and chapters and things like that, because titles and chapters sometimes have important information in them also. It gives you a hint of what it's about, so therefore it's important. So you see titles and chapters are highlighted in pink. We have unknown foreign words highlighted in blue. I wouldn't say unknown foreign words. I would say words that you don't know what they are, or words that you may need to look up a definition for. I would say anything that's not quite clear to you, I will put it in blue. Then you see here terms and models require research, put it in green. If it's something that you need to look up or you need to research or add something to it, put it in green. And then they have here um, examples. Um, if you want to asterisk or exclamation point, something like that, examples or EX, put it in orange. Now, these colors may not work for you. Colors that may work for you, that's what we use. Do you need this many uh, titles? Do you need this many colors? No, do what works for you. The main thing is that you review your notes frequently, daily, every little bit um, helps. You would be surprised at what you comprehend when you review your notes daily. Again, if the professor write it, you write it. That means it's important. If they've taken the time to put it on the board, it's important. Repetitive material is important. Write it down. Be attentive to the action of the professor. If the professor write it or give you material out the book, write it down. If your professor says, this is gonna be on the test, write it down. If he says, you're gonna see this again, write it down. Um, many times, if he gives or she gives you examples, write it down because more than likely you're going to see it again. If there's a vocabulary term, definition, formula, theorem, write it down. Um, because most of the time those items are going to be on a test. And so that you can go back and study for clarification and understanding, you want to write it down. You can't keep everything in your head. Um, instead, write it down. You are not going to remember every single thing that's going to be said in the classroom. Now, when I was in high school, I'll be honest with you, I was one of those students that could go to class, never take a note, and pass. When I came to college, I couldn't do that. And it was difficult for me in the beginning because I didn't have good study habits. I didn't have good note-taking habits. So I had to develop those things when I came to college, and it was difficult. So you can do it early if you haven't done it. It's never too late to start. So start writing things down. Start organizing what you write down. Start studying what you write down so that um, when it comes to test time, you'll be ready. I've already said this. Um, examples, these are things that can be helpful when you write it down. Symbols. Um, Again, make it all personal for you. Because when you make it personal, that's when you read it. Uh, you can remember it. As you can see here on the bottom, it says, you are 42% more likely to achieve your goals simply by writing it down. Same thing with schoolwork. You are more likely to achieve it and do well if you write it down. If you don't write it down, more than likely, you're not going to remember it. When it comes time to study or get ready for a test, you're not going to be in the best of shape. So write it down. Make it personal. Personalize your notes. Make it your own. If you borrow notes, make it your own. Break down your notes to your level of comprehension. Do not pay other folks' notes any attention. Break it down to your level of comprehension. Uh, sometimes. If, if people look at your notes, they may think they're elementary. So what? You've written your notes where you can understand them, not for someone else to understand. Make it make sense to you. Um, the other thing, if you're taking notes, uh, some people may type faster than they write. 
you need to decide if you're going to write your notes or if you're going to use technology to um, take your notes. But if you're going to use technology in a class to take your note, you need to check with the instructor first to see if that's okay. And the reason I would say check with your instructor first to see if that's okay, because technology sometimes can make noise when you're taking notes. And that can be a distraction for the class, that can be a distraction for your professor. So get approval first before you do that. You've heard me say this too, um, write the title of the chapter, um, write it down because many times the titles in the chapter can sometimes answer some of your questions. Um, if you have subtitles, if you have objectives or information that jumps out to you, write it down. Um, discussion questions, write them down. And the reason you wanna write discussion questions down is because as you read, many times you get the answer in those discussion questions. And in your mind, uh, those questions are in your mind. So sometimes you have a tendency to look for that information and it's important because if it's in a discussion question, there's a possibility you may see it again in some way, some form or fashion. So um, I would say, write it down. Skim the chapter, browse the chapter, however you wanna do it. For me, I'm one of those people, I have to read the chapters. I can't browse and remember stuff. I have to read the chapters and I may have to read it two or three times for it to make sense to me. Sometimes my comprehension level is not the best. So depending upon what it is, uh, I have to read it more than one time. And I have a tendency sometimes to, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm all over the place and I'm not paying attention. So I start off reading one thing, my mind starts to wonder and I lose my concentration. So that's why I have to write or read the chapter more than one time sometimes because every time I read it, I get something different. So I have to read it. Figures, charts, graphs, images, and maps, they're there for a reason. Take note, uh, many times they're important. For example, I don't know how many of you are Christian, but if you look into the, uh, if you're looking at the Bible, uh, many times if you see a map, a graph, or a figure or something, it's normally very important. Same thing with your textbook. So pay attention to it, read it, take notes accordingly to make it make sense to you. Again, you have captions. Read the captions. Read the conclusion, and Make a list of ideas from the conclusion that you've read throughout the chapters that you think are important. Take notes as you read the chapter. Take notes after you read the chapter. Um, you can't, I'm not gonna say you can't take too many notes, but if your notes are organized, it's better to take too many notes than not enough notes. So write down the notes of the questions that you think the chapter answered for you. Active learners are successful learners. You want to be an active learner when you're in class. You want to be involved. You want to pay attention when you're in class. Um, what do I mean by active learner? Active learners, no matter how boring or uninterested the class may be, the lecture or the video, they still pay attention. They write notes, they ask questions. Whether they're engaged or not, they at least pretend they're engaged. That's what an active learner does. Um, I would say be proactive because many times your grades depend on it. Teachers, professors, they love students who are involved, who are paying attention, who ask questions, who write notes. Um, the classes that I teach, I can tell folks to write notes, I can ask questions, they can talk to me like they're enjoying it. But many of them will sit there like a knot on the law and not write notes. And for the life of me, I can't understand that. Yes, it's an easy class, but there's some things that are being said that I know they might not remember 100% because many times it's minute little facts that they may not remember, but it's gonna show up on a test. Um, 
Research says that 20% of what you read, more or less, you may remember. 30% of what you hear, you may remember. 40% of what you see, you may remember. 50% of what you do, you may remember. 90% of what you learn with many sensory learning activities, uh, you'll remember. So that means you have to read, you have to listen, you have to see, you have to say, and you have to do. It takes all of that to be an active learner. And if you don't do that, if you just read only, more than likely you're gonna retain only 20% of the information. If you only listen, more than likely you're gonna retain only 30% of the information and so forth, so on. You need to be engaged, you need to be active so that you do say, see, hear, and read. You need to read, hear, see, say, and do. Because if you don't, more than likely, you're not gonna be a successful student. You need to write notes, you need to ask questions, you need to be engaged, you need to be proactive. And again, your grade depends on it. When you take notes, study in your notes, don't just take notes. Some people take notes, they don't bother to go back and look at them. What's the purpose of taking notes if you're not gonna bother to go back and look at them? So take notes, go back and study your notes, review your notes for understanding and review them on a regular. Review your notes to the point where you can remember them. So you read, you take notes, you take, uh, you read note cards or create note cards, you watch materials, you review your note cards, quiz yourself and ask someone to quiz you to see if you understand what you've done. Quiz yourself for comprehension. Um, you'll be surprised at what you do and don't know when you quiz yourself or you ask someone else to quiz you. Um, quiz yourself, ask someone else to quiz you because when someone else quiz you, they quiz you in a different way. They may ask questions in a different way. So therefore it may make you think in a different way. Um, as you can see here, the study second cycle is review your notes, which means, you know, read in advance, preview your notes, uh, your chapter and everything that you're reading. Attend class so that you'll be ready uh, to know what's going on in class. Once you're out of class, you review what was said and done in class. And then you, you know, you take good notes, you study what we reviewed and said in class and with your notes. And then you check for comprehension. You check for comprehension by quizzing yourself or asking someone else to quiz you. And this is more or less the study cycle. It includes preview, attending class, reviewing, uh, based on what was said in class, studying what was said in class, and check for comprehension and understanding. This is the study cycle, which includes note-taking. That's very important. And that is the end of uh, my presentation on studying your notes. Um, again, it's very important that you study your notes. Don't just take notes, but study them. Review your notes for understanding. Review your notes until you can remember them. Um, read, take notes, watch material, review your note cards, quiz yourself have someone else to quiz you. Um, if there are any questions, please write them in the chat box. If there are not any questions, thank you so much for attending and I hope that you have an awesome day. Thank you very much.